Come on, Barrett, you know the game, you pay. You again? What do you want this time? How is the sanitary situation in my town? I'm not easily scared, but crazy killers and armed patrols are lurking about. My son's right about this place. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? How are the current con- When there's more Right then. Show me what you have.
Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your foot. <laughs> Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. I know it's hard to believe, but this district has always been... You again? What do you want this time? Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. You will all be judged for your sins. Even now, he judges your words. Good evening, Mr. Nethercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? I imagine we are all part of some nightmare without beginning nor ending. If only the dreamer could awake. <laughs> Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. I understand your appetite for words and macabre beauty, sir. But you should be more careful. The nutrition of my mind is more important than my physical health. But I appreciate your concern, sir. I see it now, I see it. Oh, the verses I could write.
Hello again, miss. Very well. Goodbye, then. Hello again, miss. Tell me, Camellia, how are things now the dispensary is closed? Doctor, can I help you? How are conditions in Whitechapel at the moment? I always thought it was my role to reveal what really happens in these forgotten parts of London. And you're not sure anymore? Empty coffins, cannibalism, walking dead. I'm trying to report the truth about what's going on. No one believes it anymore. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell.
Jonathan, old chap, how are you tonight? I've seen little of you of late. I was conducting research in my room. Away from the nightly routines. Of course, of course. Worry not, I understand. The situation has been testy around here. I won't deny it, but we still stand. What news do you bring? The news is not good, my friend. We try to keep the epidemic at bay, but street violence is escalating quickly. How bad is the epidemic? It is killing the infected patients faster. In less than two days now. The only blessing is that they are contagious for a shorter period. Tell me more about the violence. Jeffrey McCallum seems to have sent his war dogs on a hunt. On a nightly basis, Prewen patrols exterminate every skull and vampire they find. Have they come closer to the hospital? No. They mainly focus on fallen districts or abandoned buildings. But they're growing in numbers. They must be recruiting heavily. Have you any reliable friends in the West End who might assist me? Unfortunately, you will be alone. Except for our ravishing red-headed acquaintance, of course. What about the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stone? Where are they? There are only a few of us. Most others would not speak to you. I am the black sheep of our brotherly flock, you know. What of my commission here at Pembroke Hospital? Nothing to fear, Jonathan. Your position here is in no jeopardy. You remain one of us, and you are always most welcome. I have received an alarming letter from Lady Ashbury. She wants me to meet her at her house. I have been granted safe passage. Then you are twice fortunate. I have never been invited to the Lady's Mansion. And with the quarantine and controls, city access is nigh impossible. Is the quarantine serving any purpose? It is helping slow the propagation of the epidemic. But as long as we have no clue to its origin, its efficiency is limited. Why have you never entered the lady's house? You are one of her good friends, are you not? My dear Jonathan, you have no idea how reclusive the good lady normally is, nor in what great esteem she must hold you to let you into her domain. Thank you, Edgar. We shall speak again later.
Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move.
Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium, sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. It's dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. these secret tests you run, and if they can save people from this epidemic. Speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our line of work, my young colleague, but only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war. Don't you think we have enough work already? Perhaps now is not the best time to be chasing shadows. Chasing shadows, really? It's funny those words coming from the only doctor here who has spent more time outside this hospital than in. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps an adjusted formula will deliver more of a placebo effect. They lack the resources, but we have some of the most brilliant minds in London at Pembroke. Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to report him to Dr. Ackroyd. It's locked. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. has any chance of curing the Spanish flu by himself. His wish to cure the sick is not driven by pride, but by an idealistic view about our mission here. Honestly, I don't know which is worse. You consider him a good practitioner, 
Yet you will not report his methods. Strickland may be a rival, but I will not use dirty tricks or regulations to prove him wrong. We are doctors, not politicians. I know that you're a busy man, but I could use your help and advice. The great Dr. Reed honors me with a request. What is it exactly? Dr. Strickland devised an experimental drug for the Spanish flu that he asked me to manufacture. You know what I think of fringe medical experimentation? That's exactly why I want you to keep the result, Doctor. I made sure it won't harm anyone, but I'd like you to take care of it. I see. Put it in my cabinet. I'll give you the key. I'll make sure no one uses this medication by mistake. I'll do that. Thank you for your help, Dr. Ackroyd. Thank you for your trust on the matter, Dr. Reed. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Now that Dr. Ackroyd has been warned, he should make good use of this formula. <laughs> 